Hi, it's Lonnie. Welcome back to my channel, Grace Blossoms for You. Today I want to talk to you about paper and sewing paper. It all started when I was watching Meg at Chasing Retro. And she's doing her series, hashtag ready, set, stash. And so she was making Franken paper and I decided I liked what she was doing. So I took this piece of paper that I had and I got out my scrap strips of paper. And so I started just laying them down and um, I glued them initially so they wouldn't move on me when I would sew them. And so I got a few made and of course, when you're doing it, you find out what you like and what you don't like. I found that I didn't like these tiny sections. So I kept making more. So here's this one. So basically, I'm using up this piece of paper, which is the base. And it doesn't really coffee dye it very well. So what I just did at the end was I just sprayed some coffee on it and just left it. So, um, anyways, so I've got the base and then I glue my scrap strips to the base and then I sewed where the seams are. I did overlap the pages a little bit just so that every, all the corners and that would be caught because glue sometimes lets go. And so I just really like the look of the sewing and um, I, I wanted to try that so I had tried Franken paper before when I first started junk journaling and I didn't have a sewing machine so it didn't occur to me to try sewing them until I saw Meg do that so I'm very happy that I came across Meg's challenge there now I did record earlier while well, I meant to. I recorded myself and uh, the camera wasn't even on. So anyways, this is what I did while I wasn't recording. I put lace in between some sheets. And so now it shows up very nicely. And um, I have to sew this one yet, so I haven't sewn this one. I did one similar to show you though, and that's this one. So I've got white on this side. And then see all the, the segments? I decided I like it a little more uniform looking. So I kind of made them a little bit varying, not a whole lot. There's some that are two inches, um, some that are two and a half inches wide. So. I just, um, I just wanted, you know, a little bit of variation. I decided I wanted to look a little bit more uniform and organized. Let's see, here is the lace on this one. And it could kind of be a tuck a little bit. I think this one will work better because it's, it's a little bit wider. But I was thinking too with the seams like this will make a great page for decorating in the journal uh, this side will be great for journaling because it's got the the page already divided into little pieces so it wouldn't be too overwhelming just to write a little bit so I think that's going to be helpful for some people that they wouldn't have to um, look at a whole blank page and what am I going to write now. And um, if I had longer pieces of paper, another thing I could have done is put the strips this way and then it would have been segmented horizontally instead of vertically. So um, that's something I might try at another time. I don't know. But again, you know, if I hadn't 
watched her channel, I would not have thought to ever sew this. So, um, if I still didn't have a sewing machine, one thing I would have taken away from this is that the seams here make it look a lot like it's, uh, what's that called? Grid journaling, where you just block off pieces on your page and then you just work in that little grid for the day or for the, for the moment and then you move on to something else. So again, you're working with a smaller space than say a whole page. Uh, some people need that. They feel overwhelmed by a whole blank page. So if it helps to divide it into smaller pieces, why not? Again, if I didn't have a sewing machine, there's other ways to get a grid look. You could draw it, you could paint it, you could stencil it. Um, I mean, you could glue pieces of contrasting paper and make frames. In fact, you could make a page of frames. That might actually look really cool. And so you wouldn't have to actually have a sewing machine to do something like that. Um, do you wanna make one together? So I have the, um, the papers that I used. This is the extra paper that I have that I don't want to throw out in the garbage because there's so much of it and why not reuse it? So I'll start on this side. I usually start on the other side. It doesn't matter. You can put as you can you don't have to put a whole lot of glue in if you're gonna sew it if you're not going to sew it i suggest using a glue that you like the texture of um yeah i haven't really found a whole lot of glue that i like the results of when i go to um make a the Franken paper. That's why I, I think I stopped making it because I didn't like how the glue made the pages feel after. So it helps for sure if you um, find something you enjoy using. And I don't know. I have to get some lace for this one. I thought this would look kind of interesting. I would add contrast. Plus, you can see it. Alright, so the way to do the lace is to sandwich it between papers. And I guess this is where it comes in that I would <clears throat> like to do it this way. So what I might do is put it over the writing like so. And then I would put in another piece of paper. Oops, I grabbed a couple. Okay. So I'll just Put the lace in first. And then the paper. So then when I sew it, the lace will be caught in between the papers so it will get sewn down and then I do overlap the pages I don't I don't want them coming up from the glue okay so I'm gonna put this one in I have 
to decide how I want it to, I think that will be okay. Maybe a thinner piece. Nothing with nothing wrong with laying out your page ahead of time to see what you're gonna like. And too, this gives me a variety of papers in my journal because when I'm making the single signature smaller ones for the youth group, I don't necessarily, well, I don't have a lot of um, room for extra papers and that's one of my favorite things is to incorporate different papers so this will um, this will give a variety without you know bulking it up more I guess is what I'm trying to say and two you don't have to necessarily stop at the edge here you could totally do another, you know, you could totally make it wider. In fact, I saw somebody make Franken paper that way. I think one of the people I saw was Sue at Sue's Journal Adventures. She did, she did this, except she did whole pages. She definitely had bigger pieces. And then I can't remember exactly how she divided up her pages, but that was another way to do Franken paper. Um, yeah, sorry, I can't remember all the details. That was a while ago. So, so there, this is what we have for now. And then if I show you back on this one, I did round the corners. And I inked up the edges. I'm going to still put some coffee on the back, I think. So, but because I chose these papers, to me, this is really pretty. I don't, I mean, these are okay, the ones I started with. But to me, they're just using up scraps. And I have to do something with them yet to make them pretty. Like, I might stamp something on these segments that are kind of washed out. I mean, the reason they were scraps is because they didn't print all that great in the first place. So to me, I still have some fixing to do before I will like those. But when I look at these, I already like them. And they're just perfect for grabbing and putting in a journal already. So anyways, short one today, not too terribly... Um, I don't know how it's going to say exciting, but I do enjoy this project. So I hope you give it a go. Again, if you don't sew, use what you have and maybe uh, try something different with what you have. All right. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by and God loves you. Bye for now.